the detention facility at Guantanamo Bay. He repeated it yesterday in the State of the Union address. He did. He did repeat it last night in the State of the Union address. Um, and so after he was elected, he ordered a review of every detainee at Guantanamo Bay. Now, this was a rigorous interagency process that was started then in, in 2009 um, that considered all of the available information about the detainees at Guantanamo, including the, the two men who are now here in Ghana. And so any previous assessment that may have been done would have been included in that comprehensive review. And so this task force assembled these, these volumes of information. Uh, they looked at the reliability of the information that we had and used it to make a determination about the threat posed by each detainee. And so the two men who are now, who have been accepted by Ghana, um, were unanimously declared eligible for transfer by our departments of justice, defense, homeland security, the Department of State, our department, and our director of national intelligence. And so, yes, yeah, starting in, in 2009, this comprehensive review looked at all the information and determined that they were eligible for transfer. And so this assessment was done in 2009. Uh, yes, the task force was the 2009-2010 the the, the task force. Uh, actually, the, the final report, not on the specific detainees, but on the process that this task force went through. That's a public document that's available online that anyone can go read through and see what was this task force looking at, uh, how did they go through this process for each detainee. I'll be interested to find that document. It's on the website. This is the U.S. government we are talking about, so we can find it, just as we found this one. But this document, did it specifically, though, deal with the cases of the two that we have in Ghana? As a, again, um, President Obama, when he was elected, ordered a review of every detainee at Guantanamo Bay. So yes, everyone uh, who was being detained went through this comprehensive interagency review that looked at all the information that we had um, on each detainee and made a determination about their eligibility to be transferred. Okay, it's important you make the point about eligibility to be transferred. You didn't say anything about whether they executed threats or not. Did the document no. say anything about that specifically? A, a, a detainee can only be transferred um, if it's been determined that uh, any threat could be mitigated by the receiving country. And so um, if, the, if, we, if there is any, um, any possible threat, then we talk to the receiving country and receive their insurances about um, you know, their ability to mitigate that threat. You talked about our ability to mitigate, that's a key important word you use there. But I want to return to some of the key things captured in this document that the New York Times and uh, Telegraph published. There are some facts about being a TEF, though, that will not change, regardless of how much time has elapsed since the last assessment was done uh, in 2007. And it, it, the last assessment, in, in, in fact, includes these assessment, these facts that might not change and will not change, includes, quote, served as a fighter in the Osama bin Laden 55th uh, Arab Brigade, and that he traveled to northern Afghanistan and fought on the front lines in uh, Kunduz. Yesterday we heard our president uh, say, uh, and you know, that you told them, uh, told us, our government, that they, and also they also did an independent assessment, that both detainees played, quote, no operational role in Afghanistan. Now, that certainly cannot be true because at least being a TAV, was on the front line fighting, according to the DOD document in 2007. I, again, um, it's our policy, as you know, not to comment on any um, alleged leaked classified cables, And uh, but I noticed that you said last assessment, and so I want to clarify again that, uh, that, no, the last assessment was the assessment that was done by the task force in 2009 and 2010 that looked at the comprehensive set of information. And so any previous reports would have been just one piece of that puzzle that the task force reviewed. I get that, but mm -hmm. nonetheless, as I've stated, some facts about where he was, what he did, remains facts. Regardless of when you do that assessment, it will remain facts. And I'm putting that against what we've heard that Atev never played an operational role in Afghanistan when he did. 
any information that we would have had on any detainee prior to 2009 would have been, as I said, just one piece of the puzzle, one piece of this comprehensive um, grouping of information that the task force looked at. And uh, they looked through this to and looked at the reliability of all that information to make a final determination on, on the detainee. And I'm curious, though, how does a person, once assessed to be a high security risk, just nine years ago, uh, because of course, and this was done in 2009-10, so it to be nine years exactly, there'll be uh, two years, three years down the line. How does that person, assessed to be a high security risk, uh, because he poses a threat to the U.S. and his allies, including Ghana, who again had once threatened to slit the throat of U.S. citizens if he's ever released, a man who once led 2007, this is a factual account, uh, 2007 detainee unrest at Guantanamo Bay, who once had as many as 125 reports of disciplinary infraction against him while in detention, including Assel. How does a person like that all of a sudden become a saint in 2016? I, I don't think anyone has used the word saint, just to be clear. Uh, but again, this is all part of this process of closing down Guantanamo Bay, closing down this detention facility, and looking at each individual detainee the information that we have, seeing if there are any any threats that are posed, and the task force decision on these two men was unanimous and reflected the best predictive judgment of our senior government officials that any threat that they might pose could be sufficiently mitigated. Any threat they might pose, that is an admission that it, he poses some threat. It, it, the task force decision is unanimous that uh, they are eligible for transfer and that any threat that they might pose could be That is an admission that mitigated. he poses some threat. Yeah. Okay. That's an admission he poses some threat, correct? Uh, I, the, the point of this, the whole task force review is to see are these people who can be uh, sent out, transferred to other countries, uh, reintegrated in some way, and that the, the receiving country has the ability, has the security measures in place uh, to make that happen. Okay, so you look to the fact that do we have the capacity to deal with that threat that they might pose? In fact, your admission there, this is clear, that you concluded that they might pose some threat, but does the receiving country have the capacity to neutralize that threat? Well, the point That's what you're saying. That, no, I would say they are not a threat or that there is, <coughs> if there is any threat. They are not a is, threat. They are not a threat. But you just told me that your own assessment says do, do they have the capacity to mitigate whatever threat they might pose. That means you anticipated that they might hold some threat. Actually, we do not anticipate that there is going to be any problem with their, their staying here in Ghana over the next two years. I mean, in the situation you say see them that, as a threat. Sarah, because they've been vetted by this task force. Again, this task force that met from 2009 to 2010 took into account all of the information we had, the because totality of that information determined that they that the, the level of threat is small enough, is low enough, um, that they're not a threat, um, that they can transfer, um, that um, that's reflected the best judgment of everyone involved with this, um, that they that they can come to Ghana, that Ghana has the ability, the security measures in place um, to participate in moving toward shutting down Guantanamo Bay. And I want to reemphasize that this is something that governments around the world agree on, mm. that Guantanamo Bay needs to be shut down. This is something President Obama is working on. Governments toward. around the world, excluding your own government. Because, in fact, let me read to you. Last year, your Senate passed a bill that bans moving Guantanamo Bay detainees to the United States. Your government, Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina, told the Associated Press that, quote, why in the world will you bring these enemy combatants to domestic soil is mind-boggling. This is absolutely nothing short of gambling national security to keep a campaign promise. End of quote. If they are not good enough for the U.S., why are they good enough for Ghana? Having looked at, again, this task force work, the review, and I'd like to say, too, that you know, they have reviewed every single detainee, and not all of them have been declared eligible for transfer. This is a, 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 um, a very in-depth analysis of all the information we have. And so I, I can't speak for our Congress, um, but President Obama... But you said governments around the world. Yes. You are the originating country, and yet you don't agree <laughs> that they should come in your own country. 
President Obama, as the leader of our nation, has determined that we do need to shut down Guantanamo. And so we're grateful to Ghana. So we are feathering Obama's political promise, and we are helping him meet his political promise. There are 55 countries around the world. When he that himself can convince in it to help him feather that same political promise. But he feels he deems fit for us to help him, Senate, uh, so, uh, help him meet that political promise. There are 55 countries around the world who have agreed to take in detainees from Guantanamo. Excluding United States of America. And that includes 24 nations that like US, Ghana. Yeah. As you've noted, this is a congressional issue in the United States. And so we're grateful to Ghana, to the other nations, the 24 nations like Ghana, that are taking in detainees who can't go back to their home countries. That's true. Uh, and so again, we feel we anticipate no problems with their stay here in Ghana. No problems, you say. But I have another fact for you, though, to consider. Under President Obama's watch, six detainees released from Guantanamo have returned to commit terrorism acts, according to the director of the National Terrorism Center, Nicholas Rasmussen, when he testified uh, to the Senate Armed Services Committee. Six of them, under his own watch. So that's actually more than 95% of them have been confirmed not to have re-engaged in any way. We do take any possibility of re-engagement very seriously, and so we work very closely um, with our allies, uh, with military, intelligence, law enforcement, and through diplomatic channels to mitigate re-engagement. Um, but by and large, uh, we, are con we are convinced that um, the vast, nearly 100%, of those who have been transferred have been confirmed not to have re-engaged in any way. And that is thanks to this robust review process that we have put in place uh, to ensure that those uh, who are eligible for transfer, um, that they're able to, to be transferred to these countries um, and, and you know, uh, reintegrate into society. Sarah Staley, thank you very much for your time here on Top Story. This has been Top Story. I want to join us on news tonight because we'll be delving into the questions that have been raised tonight by Occupy Ghana, 23 questions. It's giving government only one week to respond to that. There are uh, hints there of some legal action and the latest uh, Christian group to join the growing list of organizations opposed uh, to our shattering of these two ex-Guantanamo Bay detainees. Join us in 15 minutes on Newsnight.